Alright, so first thing off the bat, we got zipping. Zipping is a glitch that is a result of your hitbox kind of going so fast that it keeps updating its position. So the way it works technically is your head has a platform so that you can stand on it, because in multiplayer you can use your head to let your partner jump off it for a little boost. However, it also affects you, so your feet, if they ever get high enough, your hitbox will be on top of your head before you have a chance for the game to update and say, hey, you are currently going fast and you shouldn't be flying. So instead what happens is this. You just zip right up. So because you climb a balloon, all you have to do is press up. You technically don't have to hold it, but I'll show it right here. You don't have to hold it at all. I just tapped up when I had the balloon down to the floor, as close to the floor as I can. If it's right here, it will work. If it's right here, it will not work, because I'm not touching it. But that'll work. Whew. And I'm clipping through the uh, block before I can even demonstrate my next thing. So that's how zipping works, and it's just pressing up. Uh, any direction you move left or right will stop it instantly. But if you don't press any buttons, and you just press up, and then the zip happens, you don't have to do anything else. You can literally just let it roll. Problem is... <laughs> you will quickly fall back down if you don't have a way to uh, catch your fall. So, typically when you zip, you want to hold up so that you can grab onto the ceiling like that. The next thing, a little bit of extra zip tech, for balloons anyway, is if you hit a corner, you actually go sideways. You basically ricochet off of it at an angle. And you saw right there, I hit the, the block, the corner of it, and I moved a little bit to the left. So I zipped from right here, roughly this area where I'm on right now, this vertical area, and it bounced me all the way to grab this. So that's what can happen when you uh, zip on a corner. This game is terrifying when you <laughs> don't have a uh, auto cling on. Oh, buddy. So, as you can see right there, I went very far to the corner and did that. There's another one that I don't think I can demonstrate on this level, but basically there's a small chance that uh, depending on how you hit a corner, it'll clip you out of bounds. Basically, it's really hard, but it needs to be you, you hit the corner zip into the corner, and then the game has to decide where to put you. Because this game's very good at making sure it doesn't put you somewhere where you shouldn't be, but the solution to it ends up putting you in places you shouldn't be. So that's some of the business that happens with that. We can do another one real quick with the hook shot. It's a very rare item, very rarely made. I'm pretty sure it's made from a challenger sword and a spear. So, uh, already a huge investment just to get it there, and in general, you'd probably want to have a, uh... Probably want to have a Challenger Sword over a Hookshot, but just in case you ever make one, or find one. Uh, you can climb faster with it. So see here, I'm going real slow. If you literally just spam shift, in my case I'm on keyboard, I shift. Shift is my run button, my grab button, all that stuff. If you spam the run button, you can climb a little bit faster. If, when you're holding on to a wall, you uh, press up, it'll go a little bit faster in general. Spinning up with your hookshot will go a little bit faster overall. Uh, I don't think adrenaline berries affect it too much. Yeah, adrenaline berries don't really affect it. So let's move on. So another way you can do this level, with the zip tech we just learned, is like that. You wait for the the what's its, the fan blades, to uh, break. You don't want to zip into a spinning fan blade. And the only risk is dying like that. That is the only major risk. Most of the time, anywhere in the middle and on the right side, definitely the right side will have no blocks. All of the blocks on that level spawn on the left side. So we're going to be doing a little bit of an uh, example of how to use the hook shot to go a little bit faster in these zones, just like that. 
Because normally in this game mode, which is chapter 1+, plus, uh, lava moves really fast. Faster than climbing speed, so I'll just demonstrate it for example here. Really fast. And we lost it, but that's okay. We didn't make it very far, because I'm not very good at this game. But that's how you would outspeed, normally. Using the hook shot in an area where you have to climb. Just go boop, 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 boop. Spam, spam, spam. Instantly get a little bit of height. But if you find an adrenaline barrier, you're probably going to go faster. So that's just an example of getting through that. So in Zardo's Gallery, it's not too many tricks we can do with the inventory we have, but just as a uh, kind of a setup, kind of an understanding of how to do things, I'm going to show you how to fight Zardo when you have, at, at hopefully, before you fight Zardo, you have a, uh, a box. A box makes this a lot easier, but if you don't have a box, and you at least have six sources of damage, including your Corrode Potions. I have a Corrode Potion, so we can get by with that. I'm gonna have to ditch one of these things. I'm gonna ditch the hook shot because I don't care about the hook shot. But anyway, see, I have a Corrode Potion stored. So now, if I didn't have the Bitch Bane, let's just say I had six sources of damage. It could be a Spike, it could be a Corrode Potion, it could also be a... Uh, really anything. But if you have a weapon like a Spear or a Sword, great. It is much easier to fight Zardo with that. Just a little way to get it out of my area. Don't want it to affect me too much. Technically, I've already messed up, but there's a way to get Zardo to spawn a little more consistently if you're hugging the wall. But I'm going to push out a little bit right here and hug onto the ceiling. Most of the time, he'll spawn right below me. This time, he spawned directly on the line, so it teleported him somewhere else. Hopefully it doesn't happen again. So, if he's hugging the wall, he'll never hit you, which is good. You can just charge up a slash and then hit him. You want to make sure you store your sword before he swings, in case that your sword, which is currently through the wall, does that. So right now, he's stuck in a loop where he's only spawning next to the wall, because I've been keeping it kind of close, kind of consistent with the wall. And that makes it safe. This is the safe way to do it without directly hugging onto the ceiling. Once you're broken out of it, you got to start playing around it. For example, if I had a box right now, I can use the box as something to land on and kind of stabilize. Just be worried, just make sure you're not standing on the block, the box when he fires a wand, because it'll be aimed at the box and then you're in trouble. Sometimes, if he's too close to the wall like that and like this one, you can just slash and hit him. No worries. And that's a little nice way to avoid it if you're in a dangerous spot like this, where you don't want to risk it. You can just item hop whatever your item is into the wall and then kill him. And then, make sure you're not too close to the bottom. Also, it re I really hate not having auto-cling on. I think I know why I have an extra character now. It's probably because it's taken over the thing. So anyway, I could have used a Corrode if I didn't have a sword. And now we got a wand. We also got a jump ampule. Uh, one way you can use a jump ampule if you want to be a little efficient. It's risky, but efficient. I didn't get it. I was trying to uh, time a jump. That would have enabled me. Trying to do a jump that would have enabled me to, uh... Alright, we'll try it again. I did jump there, but it still killed me. That's weird. Anyway, moving on. We'll demonstrate picking up items from lava shortly after this. Next chance we get. That did not do anything. So I've been using the Elastigrap so far. Uh, it's a very tricky item to use, but thankfully there are ways to get around it. I didn't even get rid of this. Cool. So this is a perfect time to uh, demonstrate uh, how to pick up items from lava. So over here we got a nice piece of meat we wanted to pick up. Let's just say we're in a fresh start, we don't have an inventory here. I'm just using this for convenience sake. And uh, you see a rat spawned on top of lava. Well, the good news is you can grab it. Uh, most of the time, you can just kind of do a little left-right, and then press your grab button as you're doing it, and that'll pick it up. That works for most items, so...
good odds there. I normally prefer that most speedrunners should use the boot. There are so much advantages to the boot, for example. I can demonstrate that right now, actually. There's a good example of it up ahead. Uh, we'll get rid of it. We don't care about the calling horn. We don't need a calling horn. We're not speedrunning. So, uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and blow this up. So normally without boots, it is impossible to land on this block. I mean, I landed on this, but let's ignore the fact that I could grab the side of it. Let's just pretend I needed to jump on top of this block, and I wanted to do it from here. Mega jumping is what I just did. It's when you jump, and it's when you hold run, and you press jump and move right at the same time. And then it works. Now, if you have a pair of boots, these kind of actions get much easier. Look, I didn't even need to land on that block over there. I had enough height to get on top of this. You noticed both times I jumped, I couldn't land on this ledge. But now that I've gotten boots, I have enough speed to where I can do that. So boots are very much a important item if you're planning to speedrun. Get used to them, get familiar with them. I don't care for them that much because I'm bad. Gold boots, however, are even harder, even harder to manage, but they are so much more rewarding. We're going to focus on getting up first because it's a lava level. And as you can see, it's catching, it's gaining on me. So, let's demonstrate some ways that gold boots can also do some good stuff. We can make this jump. Let's just pretend we couldn't grab this edge. We can make that jump with a mega jump. Same thing here. We would, uh, uh, assuming this wasn't a jump block or a push block, and this block was in here. Let's just say these blocks were in here and ignore the fact that I can climb over there. Uh, normally without the boots. Actually, you probably could make it with a mega jump. Let's check it out. Yep, you can barely make it with a mega jump. But when you have boots, you don't even need a mega jump. You could probably just regular jump. And you make it. So something to consider. We've got our first box, finally, thankfully. Been looking for that. We can start demonstrating our next item on the docket. Box sipping. Ooh, man, box sipping. My favorite ability in the game. So to box sip, there's a lot of setups you can do. You can do something like this. Whew, almost died. Or you can do my setup, which is something like this. So the way box sipping works, for some reason, there's something about the box that it just wants to clip you up. If you notice right there, I kind of bounced up on it like that. You notice how I landed and then I popped up a little bit? Something about the box landing on the ground at the same time as you makes the game think, oh, there's a platform that you can stand on. It's kind of like walking on a ledge. Like there's just enough height where it's like, oh, we should just clip you up onto that instead of waiting. So that's how it works, just kind of whoop clips you up and because of that it does the thing we discussed earlier which is when your hitbox when your feet are on top of your head the game doesn't have enough time to catch up and say this is your new location every time it updates it or checks to update it all of a sudden your hitbox is in a new place because you're standing on something that is zipping you up so there's another way you can do box zipping without jumping uh, you can use a ledge you can do something like this where you just kind of pop off and come back on this is technically the fastest way, but it's, in my opinion, could be a little inconsistent. It takes a lot of practice. I definitely haven't practiced with it. Because I'm just good enough to do it where I can just throw it up and then land at the same time as the box for the most part. So there you go. That's how you would do a, a box sip if you wanted to use a ledge. This is most notably used to skip a section coming up in the game. But those are all the ways you can box zip. There's technically possibly a way to box zip using uh, using the uh, a really it, it happened one time. I don't know if I can ever replicate it again. 
But basically, I threw a box as I was doing this, as I was jumping. Something like this. But it, like, there was just something really, like, perfect about the timing where I, like, threw it across, and it landed, and then I walked into it right as it landed, and somehow me walking into it triggered it. I have no idea how it happened, if it'll ever happen again, but that is the case. That is what happened when it happened, but no one's been able to confirm it or test it, so no dice. So now we're in water, and we've also got a worm. Don't really need to do anything with the worm, there's not any glitches or anything in particular, but if you're fighting him in water, uh, it's really easy to use a, a ceiling like this, and it's, in general, it's pretty easy to get four hits in if you have a regular sword, or a good sword, that is. But if you have four swords, or an old sword, rather, you want to be charging up a couple of those hits. And that was another example, is you can either use a ceiling, hold up, and then just bam. You don't even have to hold up, actually. But when you're holding down, it'll slash, which is really cool. Uh, we're going to get rid of this glove and show you some tech with the hammer. Hammer, hammer, hammer. So, speed tech. First thing, really simple. It gives enough height to make a two-gap jump. It does not give enough height to do that. It also has enough height to stop you from falling. But it does not give you enough height to item hop with it. It's just a little bit too heavy. So then, let's say you reach an op opening like this. Let's get triggered by these wasps while we can so we don't get bodied. You can also use wasps to boost you, but we're not going to be demonstrating that here. So if you get to an edge, what you can do is you can time your hit so that as soon as you let go, you get a little bit of height. And then boom, you can sneak around corners like that. Really useful in the ruins, really useful in a lot of places. Messing it up can be fatal, but usually pretty easy to remedy. Just like that. Be careful of doing that though, because you'll destroy your own blocks if you're not, you know, doing it right. So those are pretty much all the things you can do with a the hammer. There's not a lot of other things we've uh, learned with it so far, but if you want to play around with it, uh, just make sure that you have a uh, sword and uh, go kill a worm, you know? Have a good time. We're gonna go back to the last grappling though. Alright, so this next trick is really important with the uh, box, the spring box. This is one of the, uh, probably the simplest tricks that are just really useful in general. Uh, when you have a spring in your hand, and then you, uh, you throw it, you don't even have to have it in hand, you can have it in your inventory and press your inventory key to summon it. I'll demonstrate that too, but we'll do it with holding it first, just to kind of get a feel for it. We're going to go to the next floor before we start it. But if you are in air, not in water, it does work in water, but it's not as effective because you can fly in water. Effectively fly. I want to get that berry, but that piranha just doesn't want to cooperate. So just be very careful of piranhas. They have janky hitboxes, like that. Pfft, perfect example. But anyway, let's say you see all these things that you, you need to get through and you don't want to climb. Well, you can just do that. That is a uh, spring jump using some really hardcore tech. Basically, you have to throw it and grab it at virtually the same time. I know it's the same key, but letting, pressing it, throwing it and grabbing it like that is the key. You can always practice it with a spent spring box, or any, even with a regular box, I'm pretty sure. Just practice throwing it and re-grabbing it. And that's all the time you need if you want to practice it. Holding up is useful because if you hit a ceiling, just like with box sipping, you want to be able to grab that ceiling because otherwise you're going to find a very horrible death. And also just be careful of these blocks because you can't grab them. So sometimes doing it and expecting a uh, ceiling will just lead to misery. So be very, very careful that you can grab whatever you're bouncing into. Uh, we can demonstrate another box sip, but I think we're going to play this one careful. 
want to make sure we get as much information out as there as possible. So if you're not going to zip, if it's a little too risky for you, if you're not a speed teker, all you have to do to get through Soul Crossing, it's pretty easy. You can just jump anytime you get to a, a spike. Almost any height will stop it, and then you'll float harmlessly through them, and then you just navigate through the rest. That's all it takes to get through the soul or the, the fatal flight with no injuries. This would have been a great uh, zone to zip with too, because we would have landed up here, and then as soon as the camera finished panning, we can just go boop, drop right down, and then finish the level, saving many seconds, many seconds. So here we are. This is going to be a great time to demonstrate a wraparound. Uh, what I like to do is, because I have auto cling on, I just tap left, in this case left, until I get to a nice little low height. And then at a certain height, when you press up, it'll just automatically grab the ceiling. I'm tapping, I'm tapping, getting low, and then I'm pressing up. It's a little bit hard to see with the spring box, so I'm actually going to drop it real quick. But let's see, I get, I get right down there. And then... You can just do that. You can just keep tapping, and sometimes it'll automatically cling. You notice that right there, I kind of cling to the ceiling a little bit. And then it just carried me safely to victory. Other times, if you want to grab it, you just gotta get really good at timing, so that you can do this. Well, not that. That was very poorly done. Doing this. Where you just press up as you're moving left and sliding down, and it'll quickly grab the ceiling. So that's one way you can do that. I want to be very careful of lavas that are like the one next to me right here, because if it goes just far enough to the right, it actually can corner clip. Thankfully none of them are demonstrating it right when I say it, but that's okay. You are safe, however, if there is a two block gap. For example, the one right above me right here can't possibly corner clip, and the lava drip won't sneak its way into killing me. So Zardo can be used for items very efficiently, uh, especially with all the eggs that just dropped out of nowhere. So what you do is, you set up your items, you kind of space them out if you like, and then that's going to kill me. If you ever see him lingering on, like, just underneath the hitbox, you should know, is very dangerous. It'll usually hit it, and those blocks contain lava, so we don't want that to happen. Oh, that was dangerous. So we just lost our revives and everything. But we got a boomerang out of it. Which is nice. Boomerang is useful. But, uh, we don't care about boomerangs. We do care about this. We care about the winch for now. We can demonstrate a couple things. Let's, uh, throw away our this block for a minute. And let's go ahead and show you that. Yep, you can just do that. Grabbing it is probably easier, but you just need to throw it. Whenever you're in the air, it'll spawn a spring jump. Pretty simple. Then we've got boomboxing. Boomboxing. My favorite tech in the game that doesn't include the elastic grab. Basically, all you gotta do, use your boomerang to grab whatever it is you item hop with. Very simple. Sometimes you can get multiple hits off of it, if you get enough practice in. However, if you miss grabbing it, it's going to be painful for you. So a lot of times, if you're not careful, you can grab and accidentally grab the boomerang instead of the item you're item hopping with. So just be careful about it. Usually I like to wait for it to settle a little bit, or at least get on top of a uh, block before I die. So yeah, good as time as any to uh, demonstrate how elastic grab works. So wherever you throw it, it'll stick. And then the best way to not die... The best way to deal with it is just press shift again, and then it'll slingshot you based on the position you're at. So really good slings will get you really good height. Really bad slings will not get you good height.
See, Lesser Crab takes a lot of practice to get good at. But it's very rewarding. Very rewarding gameplay. It's all about slingshots and momentum. That was not intentional. I would not recommend trying to uh, carry an item like that using Elastigrap. But it can be done. It's just very, it takes a lot of coordination. So we're going to go ahead and try and do a little wasp jump here to give a little understanding of what you can do. So normally you can't make that jump, but if you can manipulate a wasp, you can't manipulate it, but just if you get lucky, you can get a little extra height off them. I would not recommend it because if you hit and get stunned, you have no guarantee of where you're going to land. But if you can get it just right, it can be rewarding. But I would not recommend it. But you can do it. And it is fun. So we're at Combi. Combi is really important because now we can make a wonderful item known as the King's Hook. Best speedrun item in the game. So the speed the King's Hook has the added benefit of also being a sword as well as an elastic wrap. But really what it's good for is this. except when you get to a vine. Vines are the one counter to King's Hook. But otherwise, you can just item hop infinitely with it. Virtually infinitely. You can make two gap heights like that just by uh, spamming the item hop. All you have to do is make sure you spam your grab re-grab like that. And then all that needs to happen is aim down, or aim, you know, down to the left, down to the right, and you can just kind of, woo, any direction you like. As long as you hold down, and as long as you have a little bit of practice in changing directions, a lot can be achieved. And then you can use it for precise movements like that, when needed. So that you don't die. So we've made it to Ruins for the first time in a while. Gusts are really simple. Press space, hold down, not space, press jump, and you can do things. You can also mega jump with them, but they're a little bit trickier, especially when you have to hold down for it. Uh, if, you've, if you're on a keyboard like I am, end key rollover can be a very disastrous thing. But uh, you can get the height and speed of a mega jump with a gust, if you like. It takes a little bit of practice. So we're going to switch it over to some winch action. Whenever you're on a winch, make sure you're always holding the button that you use to jump. It makes you climb faster. If you notice, I'm kind of wibbling and wobbling here. This is while holding space, in this case jump. This is what it is without holding jump. It's very slow. Going down isn't that slow, but going up is slow. Down is okay. Up is fast. Down is about the same speed, but going up is much faster when you hold space. So whenever you're in positions like this, it's a little tricky, but you gotta get a little bit of momentum and then grab it. You go right and then left. Try and do it a little bit quicker so that you can land right here. And then try and not be bad at the game, and then boom. You can grab onto the ledge and keep going. A little to the left, back to the right, grab it. That's how you can get up these tricky corners with a winch whenever you have to. I recommend, though, King's Hook all the way. <laughs> much easier, much safer. Uh, we've demonstrated enough with the winch so we can drop it finally. And uh, hopefully, combi here. Yes, okay. So. We need a berry. We need a berry. And then we can start it off right. Here we go. So, spear and a spike. Our spear is made with a spike in a box. Costs one berry to make. How do we use the spear? Spear is probably the most versatile item in the game. It is a weapon. 
It is a speedrun item. It is a glitchy mother of a house. And we'll demonstrate some of those things on the next episode of the next floor because I don't like any of this positioning going on here. So this is a good place to try it out. So, whenever you have a spear, if you're ever on the left wall, just hug it, hug the wall, and then fire it from your inventory. You'll notice I've elevated a little bit. I'm no longer on the floor. We'll do it again. I am up here now. You can see my foot. Whenever you're on a spear, you can just spam your item button. And it'll do all of these things for you. Most notably, though, you can use it for what has been appropriately named spear climbing. Like so. You just hold left. You don't even have to hold left, but it helps. Maybe it helps. It doesn't help. But it can help you. Like so. Oh, that's not a spear. So you can hug a wall, press it, and now you're standing on it. And then you just spam as hard as you can, and it'll climb you. There are some other uses for the spear against the wall. Most notably, double spear, man. This game really wants us to have it, huh? Most notably, jumping from a spear. Like so. Um, let's see if we can find ourselves a spot where it would be useful. A good example of why you would want to use a spear jump while climbing. Uh, just a note, it does not work on the right side. Unfortunately, once you get on the right side, it the properties are not quite the same. You can stand on it, but you can't grab it. I'm spamming my grab button. Nothing's happening. It's a real tragedy. Sorry. Whew. So, doesn't work. However, always works on the left side. You just gotta be hugging that wall and then fire it from your inventory. Alright, this is gonna be a nerve wracking level. So we've got lava. Let's demonstrate how, even though we have a glove, so we technically can climb faster than the lava. Let's demonstrate how having spear climbing can make this a lot easier. Unfortunately, you don't have the speed running tech on the left, on the right side, but you do have it on the left side. So we can do all these little navigations like so. Store it, come back up, jump, 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 jump. And then we're out. We're safe. So why would you want to spear jump? Well, let's just say, for example, you had this situation. You don't want to item hop. You don't have any way to get up here. But you have a spear. And let's just say you were doing like a low percent run. You didn't want to use resources. What you can do is go ahead and place that spear. Get yourself to an appropriate height. Usually, I like to be... I think you want to be... Maybe this height. No. Just goes like that. Okay. This is not a good example. This area is not a good example for it. Let's say you're right here, huh? And let's just pretend that this wasn't here. Let's say you wanted to climb up here. Really tough to do that. Hug the wall, place my spear. Wow, my spear does not want to cooperate with whatever's going on here. So let's go down here. Ooh. Boom, spear jump. All it takes is very similar to a mega jump, basically the same kind of key presses. You go, boop, and then jump. You gotta grab it at the same time as you jump. If you mess up, it's okay. Oh. Make sure you fire it from your inventory, otherwise it's not gonna work. 
if you pick it up, if like for example, if I'm grabbing it right now. See, it's 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 vertical right now. When I fire it, it's not quite the same as when you fire it from your inventory. When you fire it from your inventory, the spearhead's on this side. Much more convenient for us. And uh, don't want to do that. Wow, that was very sloppy. Let's try and run. Woo! Alright. There we go. We rescued it. Now we're here. You want to generally put it right at the bottom of the block level you're at. Somewhere near the bottom of the block level. So that when you jump, you can grab the bottom of the ledge. Because the height you get on it... Let's see if we can demonstrate it pretty easily. The height you get from it will be demonstrated on the next level. So if we're down here, we have just enough height to grab this ledge that I'm on right now. So here we go. Actually, let's just demonstrate it without doing the actual spear. The spear jump. We're going to get right here. And look. Oh, didn't quite grab it. We can grab it. Just barely grab the edge right there. Now if we do it while grabbing it, and you got to be hugging the wall for it, You can do that. You can grab it and be on your way. So we're gonna we're gonna waste our last teleport and demonstrate a no-win situation. We are currently unable to progress the game. We don't have any corrodes. We have no teleports. How on earth do we get out of this? Well, thankfully we have a spear. So what you do is you basically want to be around this height and then place a spear. As you can see, it is zipped me all the way over here. That's because the game is doing what it does best. It's preventing you from preventing players and things from going places they don't belong by putting them places they don't belong. Really good solution. So we're going to try and see if we can get a clip here. I don't think it's possible. It's definitely not possible on this side. So I think we are properly stuck because unfortunately... The logic behind this game doesn't want us to do it, but maybe if we do something like this... We have two spears, so maybe we could do something. It is spawning us in weird places. Let's see if that does anything. Still trying to spawn us in weird places. Let's try this. Trying to get it as low as possible. There we go. Nope, it doesn't do anything. Well, anyway, the way it works is you have it next to the wall, you hug the wall, and then you just kind of keep pressing left, the left key like that, and your grab key. And eventually, you'll get to the height where it'll clip you. Normally, what it does is it'll send you a little bit more to my left and above me. So it'll basically clip you out. And this is very useful in a lot of other places that we'll go over in a future video. That talks about chapter 2 tricks and glitches and exploits. But basically, you want to be using it to clip through the area above you. Unfortunately, this area is not cooperating very well because of the layout, and it won't work for us in most cases. But we're going to see what happens if we have a spear in funky places, because this spear feels like it can do some really interesting things, depending on where it's placed. No, not quite... Let's try that. No, also not cooperating. Let's see if that does anything. No. Oh, that felt good. It's close. Keeps trying to do something here. Let's try that. Let's see if we can get something funky going on with a placement right here. Like I said, it's looking pretty grim. 
don't think there's a lot of interactions we can have with this particular spear clip. Yeah. Don't think we can do anything. Yeah. So anyway, that's going to be the end of this video, but basically, spear clipping, all it takes is spamming left and spamming grab, and eventually it'll clip you. That's all it really takes. Hope you guys enjoyed, thank you for hanging out, and uh, enjoy. Safe climbing out there.